So this part is, is not going to be uh, very pedagogical, but uh, so it's kind of will be a big overview. But after that, I will start, uh, after this uh, overview part, I will start more systematic presentation. So, uh, so we want to kind of, uh, the idea is to get some sort of universal perspective on uh, invariants of manifolds from uh, kind of quantum field series. And uh, then one kind of can realize that uh, six, six dimensions is uh, quite specific in physics, for the, especially for this purpose. So six is a maximal dimension. Uh, where we can have uh, interacting uh, Q of T uh, with uh, supersymmetry. So we need, uh, so first of all, we, we, we need supersymmetry from a kind of mathematical perspective. We need supersymmetry to construct uh, topological quantum field series uh, we are written uh, construction. So we need to produce a cohomological TQFTs. And uh, so what is known about uh, interacting quantum field series with supersymmetry in six dimensions? So, uh, so usually we kind of in physics people are interested in a, what is called a theory. It's a, in infrared kind of in the, in the conform, like one of the particular examples of series which we can study are so-called conformal field series. And uh, so one uh, can see the notion of six-dimensional super conformal field series. So this is a quantum field series. So Q of T is in 6D with a super conformal symmetry. So super conformal series is a certain extension of our uh, super, super is a certain extension of the conformal symmetry where we add, uh, extend our uh, Lie algebra by some uh, odd generators. And uh, so there is no, there is a proposed classification of such series. So first of all, they are usually divided into two types, which are called two comma zero and one comma zero. And uh, the corresponding uh, algebra of the of the superconformal field of super conform, uh, superconformal symmetry. Uh, with respect to which those uh, series, uh, those field series are invariant, are following. So this uh, some sort of standard uh, supergroup notation OSP eight slash four and OSP eight two. So this is a uh, exact uh, meaning of this is not going to be important for us. Uh, what will be important for us is that. Uh, so how can we uh, label? So what is the classification? So suppose we fix. Uh, a certain superconformal field, superconformal symmetry, either two comma zero, one comma zero, and uh, then there is a statement that the uh, so the series from this first class they label it by uh, simply by G, which is a is a simply laced. Lie algebra. So those are known to be classified by AD or U1. So the uh, the world the world of one comma zero superconformal series is a more rich. So they're classified by 
So they, at least there is a proposed classifications, uh, so which say that they are labeled by Y's. So let's say you know this Y, which is a uh, singularity in uh, elliptically fibered Calabiao threefold. So in fact, so this is a, uh, this uh, symmetry is smaller than this one. So those guys sh should be actually embedded as a special class of these guys. And this uh, uh, embedding is realized when the singularity is just uh, a de singularity times elliptic curve. A de singularity corresponding to Simply laced the algebra G. Okay. So, what is else is known about? Uh, so, the, so this is uh, can be understood as a data, a data. So, in principle, even those uh, 6D superconforming field series are not defined, but we know mathematically not well defined. We know that uh, they should be. They should. In principle, they should be defined, expected to be defined by given this, given this data, there is a, a particular theory. You can, you can consider this data as analog, for example, of the data of uh, uh, 3D n equals 4 theory, uh, which was mentioned this morning. So there the data was a choice of group and it's a presentation. So here, instead of that data, you have kind of this input. And, uh, uh, but what's important is that they are not, not gauge series. So it's not uh, really clear what to do with them. And so in particular, there is no Lagrangian description in them. Oh. And uh, so roughly, so morally, how you, can try to uh, look at them, and you can. Th this is a. You, you also can see where the problem lies. This is a contains. So those series they contain. Uh, theory of uh, non-abelian gerbs. So instead of connection, in the usual theory, you can imagine you have a gerb. Which is defined when you have an abelian, abelian group, and uh, moreover, there is a restriction that there is a uh, so this job has a three-form curvature, and this curvature should be self-dual. However, if uh, reduced on a swan, often can be described in terms of usual in uh, So in particular, if I take a uh, 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 two comma zero SCFT, uh, so you know the tau, so this will be labeled by some Lie algebra, simply laced Lie algebra G, uh, when reduced on S1, is equivalent to uh, a certain uh, supersymmetric version of uh, gauge theory. This is fi five dimensional 
gauge theory with uh, gauge group G such that the Lie compact uh, such that the Lie algebra of G is G. So there are certain ambiguities how exactly you choose a G because there can be different choices of big G which satisfies this condition, but let me know not to go into those details. Okay. Any questions so far? So now let me give you some examples and uh, of uh, how can one use. So, okay, no, first before coming to examples, let me mention. So the idea how we can use this, uh, what's kind of general idea, how we can use those guys to uh, produce invariance of manifolds. So uh, let me fix 6D CFT T. So you can imagine fixing one of these, uh, fixing by the data which I listed before, either for two comma zero case, you choose a, a simply Lightly algebra. For uh, one for more general one comma zero case, you choose a singularity in elliptically fibered Calabrian threefold. And uh, uh, sigma six minus d. So this will be uh, uh, six minus d dimensional. Manifold uh, possibly with uh, some defects. So this may be defects. You can understand some sort of puncture, some sort of punctures inside of some marked points, please, marked by some additional data. So now I'm being very generic and. Uh, so, uh, so if I reduce my 6D theory on uh, this manifold, this gives me and uh, this, this and uh, and I do a, what is called a topological twist. So this is a general procedure which, uh, starting from supersymmetric theory. Uh, produces topological quantum field theory. This uh, should should produce me a, a, a d-dimensional uh, topological quantum field theory. Again, this is a TQFT. Here we can see the TQFTs of uh, cohomological type of frequency. So no. Here, uh, so in general, uh, so in general, what I want, I, want, I fix this guy. So this guy says some some special thing. So I twist uh, in uh, remaining. In general, what I do is just a twist in the remaining uh, d dimensions. But I also can do. Uh, so in general, I can do both uh, twisting. I should do so in general. Like I, I should do both twisting in in uh, remaining d dimensions, but I also can do twisting here. So I get a d dimensional TQFTs, label it by, which I've known by Z. Label it by the choice of my 6D theory and this uh, sigma 6 minus D. So, in particular, what this means is that if I, for example, if I consider something like a partition function of this 6D theory T on some on a uh, six uh, manifold, which is a product of a D manifold times the sigma six minus D, 
this is a partition function of this effective TQFT. And uh, so in general, so, so if this is a closed manifold, then this uh, sh should, be, should be some number. But in general, I want to understand the sink as usual as we, kind of we are at axioms. Is a symmetric monoidal functor on uh, from the uh, from the category of uh, uh, d-dimensional bordisms. to the category of uh, vector spaces. So I will always consider vector spaces over complex numbers. And uh, more well, usually we want to consider vector spaces graded by some abelian uh, group gamma. So in general, this, uh, the vector spaces by themselves, they, are not, they can be infinite dimensional, but what we want is that in a fixed grading, it's a finite dimensional vector space. So again, this, uh, this just means that uh, for, if we take a D minus one dimensional manifold, we get a, a certain graded vector space. And if we take a bordism uh, between those manifolds, we get a, a linear map between those vector spaces. And of course, for a closed d-dimensional manifold, we just get a, a, a complex number. Yes. So for example, in particular, so if, uh, so if this, uh, if uh, this is a closed manifold, then this is just a complex number, which is a, is a differential invariant uh, so by TQFT here, uh, so bordisms here means smooth bordisms. So in general, we kind of we expect the, the quantum field theory to define quantum field theory. In general, we we need to uh, use smooth structure on manifolds. So this is a um, okay. So this is a. Uh, general picture and now I would uh, like to mention some examples how we can uh, using this con this construction produces some known or, or also and also some known invariants differential invariants and uh, uh, also predicts a new some new invariants and uh, after that I will uh, focus on on, on on some particular cases well it depends uh, uh, what kind of uh, so the grading come, can come from two parts. It's, uh, so first it can come from the symmetry of this guy. So it can be some isometries of this guy, which, uh, which will uh, give you, uh, so this, this uh, vector space will be representation of those isometers and the gradings will be weights. Of the isometers. This is one source of grading. The other source of grading is uh, kind of the global symmetry of my six dimensional theory which is unbroken by uh, this topological twist, which is a residual R symmetry. R symmetry of uh, what is called R symmetry. And uh, so in general, so this is, uh, but in, in general, yeah, this can, can come from global symmetries of my 6D theory, the grading and uh, isometries, isometries of this uh, sigma.
Okay, so now one can play this game, kind of pick uh, some sigma and see what, uh, kind of what happens. <laughs> but, uh, so let me give you some examples. So, uh, So example, so many, uh, so example which probably many are familiar with. So let me uh, take, uh, let me take T to be uh, of this uh, uh, two comma zero type where I fix my G to be SU2 Li algebra. Uh, then, so in particular, so if you can see the sigma, so D equals to four and sigma two to be T two with a, a complex structure tau, and then uh, this Z uh, uh, T SU two T two. of M4, so let me write it in words, is a generating function uh, for buffer written invariants of M4. So generating function uh, with respect to variable Q, which is related to tau as e to the two pi i tau. So buffer beta invariance, so I believe uh, Lothar Gutscher will tell you more about it. But uh, this is some invariance uh, constructed from the instant on by studying solutions of uh, essentially instant. Well, in general, this is an invariance constructed from considering moduli space of solution for so-called buffer beta. Uh, equations which in certain cases just can be reduced to uh, considering uh, moduli spaces of instantons. And, uh, if I take uh, so I keep uh, T to be the same, but I, let me take uh, D equals five and uh, one just this one. Then if I uh, consider so now I get a, I can I can understand this as some five dimensional well. Okay, five dimensional to QFT up to some subtleties, but let me not talk about them. Uh, so this is the level bar S1, but uh, what is important here is that, so for four manifold, this, this should give me some vector space. So this is a vector space, and it will be uh, Z graded, and Z grading comes from the U1 uh, symmetry which rotates S1. But more, one can show that it uh, has a structure of uh, vertex operator algebra. So this is one of the cases which I want to consider in more detail in my lectures. And uh, so, in a sense, this uh, categorifies the case 1A because then this uh, thing can be considered just a trace of the space, the character of, of the space with respect to this uh, grading. And uh, categorifies 1A and explains, and explains a modularity property. 
So it's, there is a well-known conjecture that uh, the generative functions for warp written variants should be modular forms. You can also consider something uh, go into uh, actually lower dimension. So take take me take uh, d. Well, uh, let me take sigma two to be again t two. But consider this t q t on a c manifold, closed c manifold. Then this should be a some vector space, and this is. Uh, should coincide with uh, this kind of SL to C floor homology of uh, Abu Zaid and Monalesco. There's kind of uh, some homology theory which categorifies Casson and Warrant. So another interesting case, uh, so let me keep, uh, so T to be again of this uh, 2 comma 0 type. So it, it will be labeled by just uh, simply laced Lie algebra G. And then take, uh, so case 2A, consider, uh, consider a sigma to be a disk times S1. And over, so the, the boundary are, so this is solid torus, the boundary is a torus, and it will have a, a complex structure, tau. So then I, if I consider my 6D series on a disk times S1 times C manifold, Then this will give you environments which are, kind of, uh, there was recent some interesting literature in, the, in this environment. They, they, so far, they're mathematically well defined only for some subclass of three manifolds, and they're denoted by Z hats, Z hat. So it will depend on the choice of this uh, Lie algebra G and a three manifold, and it's valued in a series in Q with integer coefficients. But uh, they are related to a more familiar invariant. So, so if I take Q to be, uh, I take a limit of this series. So this is a convergent series. If I take a limit Q to be a root of unity, so this should reduce to uh, uh, what is called Witten. Reshetichin to arrive invariant of uh, M3. Yes, yeah, uh, or, well, you have to, there's some choice of boundary condition involved here. And this uh, choice of boundary condition will, uh, uh, so, so there is a choices of boundary conditions which are, uh, uh, some natural choice of uh, set of boundary conditions which are uh, labeled by set of uh, spin C structures on a three manifold. So this, it has a, so this has additional label dependence on the spin C structure of a three manifold.
and uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so the, the Wittenberg Schicke derived environment is reproduced by taking a certain linear combinations, linear combination of those guys with respect to uh, the spin C structures. And uh, so if one takes uh, sigma to be just a disk, then uh, for a three manifold, we now uh, get a vector space, which will be Z to graded. And this can be understood as a, a analog of uh, Havanov Rosansky homology for closed C manifolds. So the Havana Frazanski homology is, is, is what categorifies Jones polynomial of nodes. And so, so the so the uh, so, so the, uh, so the derived construction that produces both invariants of uh, in, of links and closed three manifolds. So the same construction can produce invariants. The same construction which produces invariants uh, like J Jones polynomial invariants of links produces witten schick derived invariant of closed three manifolds. So this can be also the, uh, what the, the analog of this categorification by havana frazanski homology of the color Jones polynomial. Yes, example one and two. So, uh, well, here it's a bit, uh, uh, yes, so. Well, there's no kind of uh, very direct relation because here you have something like a disk. And, uh, but in a sense, uh, uh, there is a natural uh, uh, so in a, in a certain, in a, in a sense, this Z hearts uh, can be understood as elements. Uh, so since, since the boundary of your solid torus is a T2, the, for example, the Z-hats can be understood as elements in this SL2C uh, floor homology on a C-manifold. Uh, but for example, I mean, so here, for example, on, you can see the C-manifold and disk times S1, so you get some Q-series. So in, in many, Ways this Q series are kind of similar to Q series, which uh, uh, which appear in the generative function for both the variants, but they don't have uh, they actually don't have modular properties. But in many in some simple three manifolds, they have mock modular properties. And uh, well, there is, uh, depends who you ask, but there is some belief. So instead of uh, VOA assigns for a four manifold, uh, the analog here should be some logarithmic VOA assigned to a three manifold. At least, uh, I mean, at least this is what uh, happens for some simple, again, some simple three manifold. And, uh, So 
So let me consider example. Uh, so I'm close to the to the end of the list examples, uh, at least uh, important ones. So if I take uh, sigma to be two dimensional and I take it to be S2, these two marked points. So there, additional, there will be some additional data assigned at, this, at these points, which I'm not uh, uh, kind of some universal data assigned to these points, which I, I'm not going to talk about this now. And uh, well, I take, uh, so here, let me take G to be U1, something very simple. Again, in this uh, 2,0 case. Then uh, the statement that uh, some is extra data at points is. then you can realize in this way is Iberg written invariants of So part of this data is actually part, one of the punctures is colored by spin C connections on the four manifold, which uh, fixes your yeah, And the other the other uh, the other marked point has some universe uh, is is a universal. There is no there is no color choice. And uh, one can try to generalize this, so it take Sigma to be S2 is, uh, say, N marked points. And this gives me what is called uh, a multi monopole invariants. So this is a sort of generalization of uh, Zabek Fitton invariants. Of for manifold way, instead of one Higgs field, you have multiple Higgs fields. So this is uh, another case which I will focus in my lectures. And moreover, so all this can be interpreted as an interpretation in terms of uh, DOA. Uh, vector operator algebra, which appeared before, this was a vector operator algebra, which was uh, obtained as a vector space. It was obtained by putting this theory on uh, just S1. So, this, as I mentioned before, this gives you some ve graded vector space, which uh, more we can be cubed, uh, is believed to be cubed with the. Uh, structure of the vertex page. And now, also let me mention a bit. So here, in all these examples, I can see I consider it the case when two comma zero case when everything was labeled by simply Lie algebra. But uh, let me briefly mention what uh, can happen when t is uh, one comma zero of, of this more general list. So it's labeled by a choice of singularity in elliptically fiber Calabi-L threefold. Then uh, so one thing one can consider, as before, uh, to choose uh, sigma to be T2, two torus with a uh, uh, complex structure tau. And uh, then, uh, well, depending on choice T, this can be uh, interpreted, uh, so this is some series as in the case of uh, waffle witten invariants, this will be some series in Q with integral coefficients. And uh, they can be interpreted as a case theoretic uh, non abelian monopole invariants. So there is certain. What happens is there is certain, uh, for certain cases, the generating functions for such non abelian monopole invariants will also have, uh, will also be, 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 uh, 
We also have some modular properties. So it has, uh, which uh, come from the fact that this, from the symmetry, uh, from the mapping class group action on these two terms. Well, the choice of Calabi-Yau threefold uh, means uh, what exactly, so uh, it, it tells you what uh, gauge group you consider and what is the representation. So what is the kind of matter, matter choice? What is the matter choice and what, is, but only you cannot get all possible uh, choices of, of the uh, gauge group and matter. So only particular combinations and this, for this particular combination, this is expected to have a modular properties. Well, what I'm saying, you can construct this series for kind of arbitrary choice of uh, gauge group and matter, but not. But for this arbitrary choice, they are not going to be have any modular properties. Only for those choices which come from uh, Calabi-Yau's, you will have uh, modular properties. Uh, and uh, so there's a I'm going to say the conjecture form. Well, again, for some particular, I, I didn't explain this, but uh, if I have time in the in the lectures, I, I will also mention this thing in more detail, uh, and, uh, but moreover, there is a conjecture. Uh, the first part, the second part of this conjecture, this can be, can be refined to an element of uh, the coefficient ring of a generalized homology, homology theory, which is called TMF, which was invented by Hopkins of a point. So it's known that uh, as a, uh, so the free part, if, if you tensor this with Q, this coefficient ring, we get a ring of modular forms. But there are also some torsion part, which is not captured uh, just by this Q series. No, the torsion point is not, it should be some, it should be constructed in a bit different way. But uh, there is some prediction that there should be, it should be refined to include, to include torsion. Well, torsion, no, I mean torsion in this, uh, in, the, in, the, in this ring. So the, the free part of this ring is a, is a model of forms, but uh, Okay, this is the end of this uh, big physical physics picture overview. Are there questions? Well, uh, it's not the end of the uh, it's not the end of the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so this, for this you actually just need, can use uh, like the case when G equals U1. So you can, you can capture like homology information of your manifold and uh, things like hello characteristic signature or by just uh, considering uh, this uh, T which is associated to U1. Okay, so that's sort of nice reality check. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, 
well, in ge in general, it's not uh, so. The point well, there, you cannot. There is well. Let me say the following. So it's not enough. There is not enough supersymmetry to define 6D, the full 6D topological quantum field theory. But if if a 6D, if you produce six, six manifold has some special galonomy, then you might do, do something. If if your if your fabrication will have special some a particular special galonomy, then I think you can do something with this. But uh, The holonomy on the tangent bundle. Uh, ah, so, so the holonomy, like, is, is the. You also have a metric and the holonomy is the holonomy of the. Yes. Okay. I mean, yeah, to define the theory, you can you keep it with the metric, but then you show that it doesn't actually depend. When you please. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question? Well, uh, uh, which which case? Uh, this case, this case uh, well, so far for something like uh, product of Riemann surfaces. And uh, but uh, well, you can also try to do this. Uh, yeah, I mean, so so far, but uh, well, I believe uh, you can uh, like if you use this kind of definition, you should be able. Probably to compute uh, for complex surf for like complex surfaces. Uh, well, using technique by Goetz and Kuhl, maybe. I don't know. But uh, yeah, in in uh, in our work uh, we did this. Uh, so the work with uh, with with work by myself, uh, Dupay, who is here, Kumran Wafo and Sergey Gukov. We did this, uh, for example, for the, for this uh, for. In one comma zero case, in one in one comma zero case for uh, for product of Riemann surface, but for two comma zero case you can do you can you can do more. Okay. So okay, let uh, so let me uh, so so we have ten minutes. Left. So let me start a kind of more systematic exposition. So. Uh, since not, uh, so I, I, I think not uh, everyone is familiar with the notion of vertex operator algebras, uh, I should uh, briefly re review this. And this is what I will start doing. Because later, later we, will, we will need to use this notion. So what is the definition? So let me first define the vertex algebra. So what, what actually, uh, so some people may call it, uh, what I will define here, some might people call it vertex super algebra. And uh, so this contains uh, the following data. So it will be a vector space. Which is uh, Z to graded. And uh, so this is the part where you can call it super. So some, the most classical definition doesn't have the Z to grade. So there is a. Uh, so I will denote uh, using kind of phase physics. Uh, notation I will denote z to, z to grading as f, the value of z, z, z to grading as by f. And uh, so there is special, so the following data, so the following, uh, so the following uh, quadruple uh, vector space v, a uh, choice of uh, what is called unit element in v, in physics called vacuum. And uh, so it has Z2 grading. It's uh, even. And uh, then there is a translation. 
what is called translation operator. So this is an element. So th this is an endomorphism from V, or endomorphism on V. And uh, what's mod most important, so probably I should write it here. So let me write it one, two, three. Is uh, so what is usually referred as a state operator or state field correspondence. And this is uh, often denoted in mass literature by Y. And this is uh, so, uh, so one way is to define it as a a linear map from V to endomorphisms of V, endomorphisms of V, and uh, so you take a series, uh, Laurent se formal Laurent series in Z, with coefficients being endomorphisms of V. So other way, equivalently, of course, you can you can uh, understand as a map from V tensor V to V itself, sorry, to series, to Laurent series in Z, this coefficient being elements of V. And more, so this is a, so, so vector, vertex operator, vertex algebra is a quadruple, is a following quadruple, and more they should satisfy the following axioms. So if I uh, take the state field correspondence of one, so this is uh, will be just constant series with coefficient being identity operator. And uh, uh, the T, the translation operator, should satisfy the following property. So if I take a, uh, the value of this uh, state field correspondence of some element u, u, so for any u in v, and take, a, so this gives me some element of endomorphism v valued in, so uh, series in z valued, this coefficient valued in endomorphism v. So I can take a commutator of this, uh, operator acting on V with T, and this should be the same as a derivative with respect to Z, this formal parameter of Y of U. And uh, the third axiom is, uh, sometimes it's referred to as locality or uh, Jacobi identity. Uh, is it, uh, so it might be not very visible here, so let me continue on this part. So this locality is uh, that uh, for any pair UV from my vector space, uh, there exists a positive number n such that the following is satisfied. So if I take a commutator of y of u uh, with formal variable z, and y of v is from par variable x, and multiply by sufficiently high power of x minus z to the power n, this should be a zero. Questions?
So this was the definition of vertex algebra. Now, uh, what is a vertex? Oh, sorry, I, I forgot to mention. So of course uh, we uh, take, so this commutator is a graded commutator. Of course it's, uh, uh, this commutator is uh, by definition is, uh, plus minus one, so here uh, uh, you have uh, f of u times f of v y minus So you, as usual, you take in the super world, as usual, you take commutator or anti-commutator depending on the parity of u and v. And of course, this, uh, this uh, map y is even, is even with, respect to, uh, with respect to z2 grade. So now, now let me uh, state the definition of vertex operator algebra, uh, and, and I'll stop. So is a is a vertex algebra with additional data. Um, so the data is a. Uh, element, a certain element omega of V, of my vector space, which satisfies the following condition. So if I take the state of, uh, field correspondence of this element, I will, uh, so let me denote this series by T of Z, and, uh, so that it has a expansion of the following form. So those guys, as by definition, those are some operators acting on my vector space V. And uh, so this omega is such that, so if uh, those LNs uh, satisfy the Rousseau algebra. Relations. C, where C, so here C is just uh, some, a particular complex number uh, times identity on B. And uh, moreover, uh, V is uh, Z graded by L0, meaning that V can be decomposed into, with respect to this Z grading, such that L0 on each component acts just by multiplication by some integer N. And, uh, and uh, L minus one should coincide with this translation operator which you had before, and uh, omega, itself should be element of uh, degree two. Okay. And, uh, so one uh, very brief thing is that uh, modules of uh, vertex algebra V 
are vector spaces. M equipped with uh, the following map. So there's a map from D to now in endomorphism to the endomorphisms of M. And we take a series of this. For this, we take a series in, again, formula run series in Z uh, with coefficient valid in endomorphism of M. Of course, V itself is a model is a model of V. Okay, uh, here I, I'll stop. Yes.